So now we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of the 555 timer wired as a Schmidt trigger inverter. So if you get a high enough input voltage, you get a, uh, oops, that way, a low output right there, connects to ground. You get a low enough uh, voltage, less than one third supply voltage, you get a high output and uh, whatever middle ground voltage you set, the output will stay wherever it is uh, between one third and uh, two thirds supply voltage. So I got this 555 timer out of the, uh, kit here i recommend if you want an integrated circuit get uh, one in a variety pack like that um so you got other integrated circuits to play with and uh, learn about you know unless you absolutely need a whole bunch of uh one particular uh component so yeah there you can see the part number pretty well right there ne555 micro a ua555 will work the same p means it's an improvement usually and um, if there's different letters in uh, front of the 555, it's probably got some different electrical properties you got to be aware of. Check the uh, data sheet. So yeah, there we're going to plug it in. So pin number eight. So starting, we got the divot at the top. Starting at the top left, we got one, two, three, four. And then you jump across five, six, seven, eight. That's how the numbering system works for these dual inline package integrated circuits. They straddle this uh, gap between the breadboard. And uh, we got the positive supply to pin eight, negative supply to pin one. That is how you power it. And it also sets the one third and in uh, two third voltages internally right there that uh, some of the input pins uh, respond to. You can adjust them with pin five, be aware of that, but that's a more complex topic. We're not gonna dwell on that. We disable pin four. Pin four is waiting for a connection to ground to force the output low, pin number three, and to keep it low. Be aware of that. Now. Both uh, pin 2 and pin 6 need to look at the same voltage to uh, get this circuit to work. So we're going to take uh, this jumper that I made there and uh, I just took a, a piece of wire, uh, cut it and stripped the ends right there. But uh, it straddles pretty nicely right there. And uh, yeah, pretty simple circuit. So um, let's do the uh, output load right there. So I like to use a blue LED from the positive supply to the output right there and uh, they don't need a lot of current so 1000 ohm resistor will work well but uh, i'm going to swap where the led and the resistor are because for these demonstration circuits i like to uh, have the resistor come away from the component come to the led so i need to uh these got a little bent right there need to put the longer lead to where the positive supply is so usually i like to work positive up down towards a uh, negative um but uh since uh, I can't go down to the discharge pin right there, I'm gonna go up instead with the uh, cathode, the uh, shorter lead. If you put it in backwards, it won't light up, you know, basic uh, LED stuff. And then this is the uh, 1000 ohm resistor. There's no red on there. And uh, so of uh, all the resistors that I've been using lately, the 1000 is the only one that doesn't have any red on it. So, you know, it's uh, good to get familiar with the color code. You don't have to memorize it. And uh, this board really does not want to uh, let stuff go in today. Let's go over one slot. So don't fight with uh, one slot for too long. That's my tip. Try the slot next to it if possible right there. So yeah, now we got it in. That went in uh, pretty easy. The other uh, output right there, LED resistor. We want more current, so 220 ohm uh, resistor again. I'm going to swap the, uh, the order that they go through as far as the circuit's concerned. So... Here, we can go above the uh, negative there. So I'm gonna put the anode up one spot, the longer lead, shorter lead, the cathode. I'm gonna put to that jumper. And again, breadboard's being really finicky today. So there we go, went over a spot, went right in, saved a lot of time and effort. And then uh, 220 ohm resistor from the output, pin three. Now, our signal. This is uh, not really how you would control a 555 timer. Obviously, if you're gonna turn something mechanically, you could just switch it uh, directly. This is more just to get you familiar with uh, what the circuit does. And uh, so you gotta think about the signal you're given the 555 timer and how it is responding to it. So the middle pin is the wiper right there. And I usually like to put these grooves towards uh, the jumpers, but you don't have to. Um, main thing is, there we go. Um, they're nice uh, wires for plugging into the breadboard if you get uh, these right here. Nice thing is we point towards the uh, negative supply that gives us zero volts if we go all the way down and then we're going to power it with five volts 
you go about halfway that's 2.5 volts that'll output it can't provide current with that voltage though it's just a signal voltage and that's what both of these inputs are waiting for just a signal voltage and then you go all the way uh, there now you got five volts so anywhere in between coming through there so you can manually control the voltage it's all a fraction of the total supply voltage um, you know a hundred percent five volts or zero percent uh, zero volts and anywhere in between so let's uh, again this jumper um, wasn't made for specifically this uh, this uh, uh, jump right there so you know you kind of got to bend the leads to the wires to adjust it um, so I did that earlier um, it went in okay right there but I uh, gave a little struggle so yeah that's uh, really about it right there our signal voltage and then uh, we're gonna look at the output to see how that responds remember um, when the output is low I used a blue LED right there it connects the ground it connects the ground really well um, almost a perfect uh, connection good enough to say it's a direct connection but uh, when the output is high then uh, I used a red LED to indicate that you got some uh, transistors that it goes through that drop some of the voltage so instead of five volts we'll probably get about three and a half volts usually you lose about a volt and a half at the output there the main thing is though we get a high enough uh, voltage here two-thirds or more we will have a low output low enough uh, voltage at our uh, signal coming in less than one third we'll get a high output so the output will be opposite of what we set there but there is a middle ground region where it could be in either state between one third and two third supply voltage so now a uh, bench power supply this is more of a portable one works better for the uh, videos um should have a uh, banana plugs right there for delivering power the wires usually you put black to negative red to positive uh there's also uh, split supplies dual supplies where there's a ground and a positive and negative in relationship to this but if you just got black and red uh, black is the ground right there uh, so we got uh, zero volts and a uh, negative volt so um, power supply output is on um, probably best turn it off when you're making the connections um, definitely if you are wiring the circuit this particular power supply though actually provides a slight negative voltage when it is off for some reason um, so usually not a big deal but it may be just be aware of that so I thought I'd mention that I limit current to a maximum of 20 milliamps current instead in case I accidentally miswired something so if I had a short or something um, we would see CC instead of CV it would be limiting the current to 20 milliamps when the circuit uh, asks for more and uh, so um, yeah lamps at the dimmest uh, brighting uh, setting there you can see red LED not terribly bright um, you know uh, maybe you'd want to use a little less resistance to get more current it says uh, four milliamps current that's actually kind of low I think we may have like some connection problems um, but in case we uh, won't worry about that right now that's one reason why you should use cheap breadboards when you practice electronics um, and uh, yeah we uh, lost connection right there so we'll get this a little more stable I'm gonna hold it uh, more steady right there so we got a low input right there high output that's the main thing outputs gonna be the opposite and then I got to go more than halfway I got to get to two-thirds of the way for the output to go low right there and uh, so I can keep going up don't matter um, now the outputs gonna stay low even if I go back through this area where it was high before till we get to one-third of the way down right there now we got the red LED so um, we got a middle ground region that's called hysteresis when you hear Schmidt trigger that's uh, what it refers to is uh, there's hysteresis a middle ground region where uh, as long as that input stays within that middle ground region the output can be in either state right there so um, it's a good practice circuit because you can control the input voltage manually you can look at that with a, a multimeter and oscilloscope too if uh, if that helps I've done that in other videos but here we're just gonna focus on that step-by-step -step build and then uh, powering it right there so um that's it hope you enjoy make sure you check out one of the other videos i'm posting on the screen and check out links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you in the next video